soon. Somebody just cat called me, that was awesome. <laughs> So, uh, I don't normally like referring back to my notes, <laughs> however, it's going to be impossible for me not to do so, so please pardon me for that. Your pardon. Thank you. Matthew 7, 3 through 4. It does not profit you to offer to take the moat from your brother's eye when you still have a plank in your own. The Mormon Church spent an estimated $25 million on Proposition 8. The Catholic Church threw an additional $1.2 million into it. All told, approximately $40 million was spent defending marriage in the state of California alone. They did this not because they hate gays. They did this not because not because they are afraid of gays or what they represent. They, are, they did this solely because they were forced to do so as good, honest, God-fearing Christians. So where's your rage? Where are your rivers of righteous cash? Where is the righteousness, your passion for obscure, possibly misinterpreted biblical verses? Where are your laws against cloths made of two different types of cloth, like Deuteronomy 22.11? Where is your righteous anger against Mr. Clean? As it is uh, technically illegal to shave your head or your beard, Leviticus 21.5. Now the problem is these type of biblical verses don't mean anything because the Old Testament was rendered moot by Jesus' sacrifice. So maybe by quoting these things I'm not accomplishing anything. So how about we move to the New Testament instead? Where's your fury against vegetarianisms? 1 Tim 4 1 through 5 and Romans 14 both decry vegetarianism, not to mention the story of Cain and Abel. Cain's first sin was to offer vegetables rather than burnt meat. Where are your millions spent to prevent legal divorce? Matthew 19 9. Why do you not throw your political might against female teachers? 1 Timothy 2 12. It is not fitting that a woman should teach but should be in silence in all things. For it was not E. Adam who was deceived first, but Eve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your amendments against Hindus, Buddhists, Catholics, and other idol worshippers? I don't hear of your legal fights to get alcohol banned, even though drunkenness is listed over and over and over and over again as a sin. <laughs> yeah, I know. But at the same time, there's another verse. Um, 1 Timothy 4, 8, exercise is useless. And 1 Timothy 5, don't drink water, drink wine. God bless you. <laughs> Go, Timothy! So, where is your Proposition 7? No working on Sundays. It's a fucking commandment. You don't even get the day right. The seventh day is not Sunday. It's Friday morning-ish going on to... It doesn't work. You didn't just change the day. You changed the definition of a day. But you're so legalistic, so literal, that you have to go after gays. You have to prevent them, their, the, the possibility of their love. You have to... Sorry, this is just absolutely fucking insane. You're so tight on this that you're willing to change the holy day of Sabbath but not willing to let gays love? Is this how it works? Don't give us this shit. Don't claim you, you have to because, because the Bible tells you so. You have to because... You know why I think you have to? It's because these laws, the laws against against gays are laws that do not burden you. These are so easy. You don't want to marry another dude. This is a great fucking law. I don't have to do shit for it. I don't have to ban alcohols. I can continue to watch NFL on Sundays even though that means they're working. 
I don't have to not drink uh, booze. I don't, you know, I can get a divorce from my wife. These things are all banned in the Bible and not in little obscure passages that very well could be misinterpreted. These are about as literal as you can make biblical verses. So don't tell me you have to. Don't tell me it's because you're righteous Christians. You know what you are? You're lazy and fucking evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.